This is a mob switch, and it can disable hostile mob spawning in your Minecraft world, and here's how it works. This block is the world spawn point, and this is the world spawn chunk. Nine chunks out from there, there is a square of chunks centered on spawn. But what's so special about these chunks? Well, these chunks are always loaded by the server. They're called entity processing chunks, and anything uh, like redstone, iron farms, and entities will work the same way as if they were loaded by a player. However, something like a sugarcane farm wouldn't work in this area because that relies on random ticks which need players to function. So outside of the chunks marked in green, there's another ring of chunks marked in red and orange. These are known as lazy chunks. In lazy chunks, only things like block updates and terrain population will work. Mobs still count to the mob cap, but they wouldn't be processed as they normally would be in entity processing chunks. Now that we know about lazy and entity processing chunks, let's talk about the mob cap. The game will only spawn hostile mobs in the world if there are less than 70 of them already in the world. That's called the mob cap. And in a mob switch, we can use this mechanic to fill up the mob cap, thus stopping the game from spawning any more hostile mobs in the entire world. But wait, there's another problem. Mobs would despawn if the player moves too far away from them. But we can just name tag them, right? Nope, because any mobs with name tags in boats, in minecarts, or that have picked up items won't count towards the mob cap anymore. So how do we work around this? Well, we've got three options. We could use zombie villagers, shulkers, or withers. Let's go through the pros and cons of each of them. First of all, we couldn't just use any zombie villagers. Regular zombie villagers would despawn like most other mobs. But if we get a villager, trade with it, and then use a zombie to zombify it, the zombie villager will both count towards the mob cap, and it won't despawn. Next we have shulkers. We don't actually have to do anything to the shulkers to prevent them from despawning, and they count to the mob cap, so it would also be a good candidate for mob switch. The only real downside to them is getting them from the end, but if you have decent gear and equipment, that shouldn't be too difficult. Anyways, the last option is withers, which are easy to spawn and trap in bedrock, and if you have a wither skeleton farm, it can be very easy to get the skulls to spawn them. However, if you trap your withers in bedrock, then you won't be able to move them in and out of lazy chunks, which means you have to rely on a chunk loader. So using zombie villagers could be good for early game or a single player world, but shulkers are easier to obtain in large quantities, especially with the addition from 1.17, which lets us make shulker farms. Withers are easy to get huge amounts of, but they need chunk loaders, so they might not be as feasible for single player worlds. What's a chunk loader? It's a contraption that can load chunks both entity processing and lazy. Currently, the only way to load chunks outside of the spawn chunks is with a portal based chunk loader or with a player. The way a chunk loader works is sending an entity back and forth through a nether portal. When an entity goes through the portal, it'll load the dimension it went into for 15 seconds or 300 game ticks. In case you didn't know, 20 game ticks in a second. The portal will then load a 3x3 of entity processing chunks centered on itself, and then a 5x5 ring of lazy loaded chunks around that. So if we were to build a wither based mob switch, we would only be able to toggle it using a chunk loader by simply stopping the cycle of entities going through the dimensions. If we put withers in the spawn chunks, we wouldn't be able to push them with pistons or anything out of the bedrock because of course they're stuck in the blocks, and the switch would be permanently on. Upon restarting a server, chunk loaders frequently stop working. Logging out of a single player world forces the world to stop. Multiplayer servers generally restart much less than single player worlds, so building a chunk loader based mob switch is really only feasible for a multiplayer server unless you want to go and turn it back on each time you log in in single player. Now I'm not going to build my own wither based mob switch to showcase in this video, but if you want to use withers, I'll leave a link in the description to a very nice video by VKTech. And the decision of whether to use zombie villagers, shulkers, or withers is yours, but now let's take a look at my designs for mob switches. So I made this contraption here. What it does is push shulkers back and forth in and out of lazy chunks. This system has 17 shulkers per layer, with a total of 5 layers. This leaves us 85 slots for shulkers, and in a single player world with only one player in it, the game will stop spawning hostile mobs when there are more than 70 of them in the world. So while the system has room for lots of shulkers, you don't need to fill them all up. If you're on a multiplayer server, the system can easily be scaled up to fit more shulkers in it, and it can all be toggled with the lever at the bottom of the machine. And to send a shulker into the system, all you have to do is send a shulker in a minecart down the rail, and the system will do the rest for you. Also, when I say push mobs in and out of the lazy chunks, I mean out of the lazy chunks and into unloaded chunks, and then back from unloaded chunks into the lazy chunks, and this way when they're in the lazy chunks they count to the mob cap, and when they're out of the lazy chunks they are no longer loaded, and therefore they don't count to the mob cap. I also made the zombie villager version which could be better for early game if you haven't been to the end yet. This one also makes the use of the same mechanics as the shulker one, pushing mobs in and out of lazy chunks. There are 4 cells to combat entity cramming, so a maximum of 24 zombie villagers can be put in each cell. If you're playing on a multiplayer server where you need to be able to fit more zombie villagers in the system, you can expand this machine horizontally, but as it's scaled, it's more and more effort to get all of the zombie villagers. Now before I show you one last concept for mob switch, I just wanted to take a quick moment to say that if you're enjoying this video or finding it helpful, I would really appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to the channel. If you did, thank you very much.
Anyways, this same concept can be applied to prevent passive mobs spawning as well, but much less mobs are required for those. You see, the passive mob cap is only 10, so we only need to get 10 passive mobs per player into lazy chunks of spawn chunks or a chunk loader. Also, passive mobs don't despawn even if you feed them, which means we can get a handful of anything like sheep, cows, pigs, or chickens and just leave them there in lazy chunks. We can use the same mob switch design as we did for the zombie villagers for passive mobs. In case you were wondering, the reason the mobs are moved up across and then back down is that we can ensure they are all within the lazy chunks or outside of them. However, something to keep in mind is that this mob cap doesn't include things like fish, bats, and a few other things. Those all have different mob caps. Now, if you're on a multiplayer server, you might be wondering how many mobs you need for your mob switch. Well, for every player that would generally be online at once, you want to add 70 hostile mobs to your hostile mob switch. So if your server would have a maximum of 3 people on at once, then you would only need around 210 hostile mobs, and for every player online, you would want to add 10 passive mobs into your passive mob switch, so for 3 players, you would need around 30 mobs there. However, I would recommend adding a few extra mobs, as sometimes the game still spawns mobs even though the mob cap is full. In my single player world, I put 72 mobs in my hostile mob switch, when the mob cap is only 70. And once again, if anything this video was helpful for you, I'd very much appreciate it if you would consider subscribing, and to help this video spread to more people, it would help out a lot if you click the like button. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.